We haven't moved on since the arrival of Cook. We're still colonising. We're still not partners. We still don't include. I'm not proud to say I'm a recovering racist. Of course I'm not. I have to live with that for the rest of my life. But it's the truth. I'd opened a new business, an optometry practice. We'd won a Top Shop Award for retail. Very exciting night. And the then mayor came up to me at the end and said, congratulations, I want you to um, put your name in the hat for the next election, because one day I think you could be our mayor. Oh, yeah, I mean, it ticked all the ego boxes. I'd never considered politics ever in my life. So it worked, and I applied to become on a council. Turns out he says that to everybody. My campaign slogan was, let's bring honesty back to local politics. I never thought those words would come to me in a way that I couldn't have predicted in terms of what actually ultimately unfolded. My first official engagement within the Māori world, such as the mayor, was to visit Owai Marae and Waitara for Sir Maui Pomari Day. I was so anxious. I, I mean, I couldn't sleep the night before. I was learning a bit of a pepihara to do because I had to speak. The thing is, I didn't know how to go on a marae. Where do I look? What do I do? I haven't hung at anyone in the past. Am I, well, how do I do that? Do I do that? Um, what does that mean? What am I going to eat? What, what is for lunch? What do they eat? I mean, it's ridiculous. The thing is, it was lovely. It was, what was I scared of? Man, I was asking myself some deep probing inner questions around my ignorance. Why have I never been in this world? Why have I never looked? The nagging thought in my mind and heart was, were well, you racist, Andrew? And of course I default to, no, well, no, I'm not. Well, how do you know you're not? Because New Zealand is Pākehā. We don't really talk about it. I started reading some backstories of my own province, and it was like reading two parallel universes. All the horrendous statistics that Māori are in, in health, education, poverty, homelessness, the disproportionate incarceration rates. And I thought, you know what? That's through policies that Europeans have created. So those outcomes for Māori are actually at the hand of us. We're the problem. In New Zealand, all councils, every six years, have what's known as a representation review. And the essence of that is a council should reflect fair representation of its people. In this process, the first question a council must ask is should it decide to vote to establish a seat for Māori? Just as we can have rural seats, we understand those, and urban city seats. And we think, well, that's fair enough. The farming people have their own world challenges, their own st lifestyle and culture. We, they need to be there, otherwise the townies will dictate the outcomes. We will get that. The same applies for Māori because Māori deserve to have their voice at the table. But here's the kicker. Only that seat has the legal ability to be petitioned and removed by way of polling and public referendum. Not the rural seat, not the general seat or the city seats, only the Māori seat. So our council voted to establish the Māori ward in its representation review. It was so divisive. There was an outcry in the community to form a petition to enforce a referendum that binds that council to that outcome for the next six year period. They got it in record time. Businesses advertising where the place to sign the petition. A councillor saying, come to my place to sign the petition. The petition was presented to me at council. When the result from the polling came to the office, I could tell by the look on their faces what the answer was. I can't even remember the numbers other than just hearing we're sorry. I found myself driving and then ending up here at Lucy's Gully. I just needed to find some space, find some way to just absorb what my community had said. What I was witnessing was the tokenism around it all. Because there was 15 people on my council it was one seat for Māori. I have had a petition to Parliament, been sitting with them for a year and a half, saying, surely 
the fairest way is that any seat that a council establishes should follow the same process. Either they can all be petitioned, or none. Or be honest enough to say you don't actually want Māori there in a real way. In my time in the office, I was inundated with hate mail and things. It was an event that I put on for JPs. I did a small karakia welcome. Five of them came up to me at the end and goes, aren't you the right little Mary boy? His mate says, that's right, son. Don't think we've not been following you. What's all this Mary stuff around the table? You're not coming back. But you represent the justice system. This is horrible stuff. I'd just never seen it. So what I was experiencing is nothing for what Māori have to live with. Some people might think, well, I'm not racist. I've done a te reo course. I sympathise. Because people have said that to me. So then I said, that's great. Did you agree we should have a Māori seat at the table? Yeah, no, they should have a seat at the table. There's 15 councillors. Should it be seven each? Seven each? That's getting a bit carried away. Why not? It's a partnership. No, no, that's, that's just ridiculous. Is that racism? We have to challenge each other. Help break down those barriers and those systems that have done all this. Lobby your MP to remove legislation that allows us to petition Māori. Lobby your MP to have a better justice system, health and education system. Support the return of what was taken. We're all in this. You don't have to be elected to make a difference. You've got to stand up to racism. You just do.